Uh, thank you for staying that late. I'm Uri Sagib. Uh, I'm originally from Tel Aviv University, but now I'm in, on leave. I'm uh, working in Satora. So Satora is a, actually a sizable company, which is actually trying to protect the smart contract. And it's very much related to the talk that you, you heard by Easel about applying static analysis. And basically what we can show you, we have this static analysis tool which actually can prevent many of the bugs before the code is deployed. Our team consists of actually many, many excellent people. Many of them are actually here. We combine expertise in formal verification with expertise in code security. We come from top school, from uh, the Ethereum, for, I, for, for uh, the IDF. And we basically try to merge them in order to make the, this area more secure. So what we are trying to do here, and it's basically we are trying to, to convince the community to actually write formal specification for software. And this is, of course, something that has been around for a long time. But we think that in this domain where you have a lot of money at stake, this is where you're actually going to do this specification. And we have our own language, and you can look into our website. We have a lot of specification. We have specification that we wrote, and we have more interesting specification that customers like Maker and others wrote. And it's very interesting that we see people in this domain writing specifications. And these specifications, they are reviewed by human, but they are also checked by the machine. And we are developing the technology to check the specification. We check the specification, the specification themselves, but we also check that the code adheres to the specification. And interestingly, we are finding a lot of bugs before the code is deployed. So in terms of whom we work with, we are really, we started actually working in this domain, and this is domain is an expensive domain, because you have to invest a lot of effort in writing the specification, and also a lot of computational effort in actually checking the specification. So we, we started where the pain point are, and the pain point is where you have a lot of money at stake. So basically what we are doing, we are controlling the, and actually, we are checking the code before it's deployed. And this is complementary to auditing. It's applied before the audit and after the audit. And we are very proud to find the bugs and prevent them before the code is deployed. Our technology actually can run on the actual executed code, so it can also find bugs after the code is deployed. And we, of course, report them in a, in a quiet manner. Our technology integrates into CI, and we'll talk about it later. What is the technology that we are developing? So actually, this technology has been around for a while, and I think Ezel mentioned it in the talk. It's called abstract interpretation. Actually, most of this work has been done very, very close to here, in a, in a place called Ecole Normale Superieure, and we have a workshop there tomorrow. So please come to this workshop, and actually, we are teaching them. And see, this technology has been industrialized, and there are different tools. There is the Covery tool, which is a standard tool. It, it, it's a very simple tool, but it's a standard tool. There, there is Absinthe, which is a more advanced tool, which is actually started by the Cousseau. And uh, there are other tools. And in the domain of smart contract, the, the leader tool is Slater. And Slater is actually a tool developed by 12 of Bits, that is a security company. And it does static analysis to check the code. And it actually implements clever static analysis to check for vulnerabilities. Uh, I guess you see, this is the application of Slitter to uh, a lot of uh, basically very, very simple contract taken from our website. And you see all the red lines, they are errors. Do you want to guess how many of them are real? People not from Sertora, there are very few of them. Nobody guessed? Okay, there's zero, okay? So the idea is actually these are errors that are reported by static analysis tools, but in fact, because the tool, and this is also what Israel mentioned in the talk, because the tool is not aware of what is checking here, the tool is actually reporting errors which are not real. So why is static analysis not used in practice? And this is something that has is, is, is been known by companies. There are kind of two problems with static analysis. One, these are the errors that is missed, 
And that's a bad thing, and it could happen in Slita and many other tools, not in Absin. But the other one, which I pointed out here, is that many of the errors that are reported, in fact, most of them from the studies that people done, are actually false alarm. They are not real errors. So these are the two things that are kind of problematic, but in fact, I claim there is another one, which is even worse. And this is what happened in the blockchain. The idea is that the bugs that were found and the bugs which are prevented by the Sertora approval, they are not actually contract specific. They take into account something which has to do with the meaning of the contract. And they're basically checking the fact that you are doing a liquidation, you are doing something which has to do with that. So therefore, if you apply this general static analysis, the usage of it is limited. So what we implemented in Sertora, we implemented something that in the community called deductive verification, but it doesn't matter if you want to call it whatever. The idea is that you have the code in one hand and you have the specification on the other hand. And the user has to write specification. And we are trying to make specification natural, like you're writing variants about your code. And these are the things that you write about your code. Once you do them, our tool can prove the property for you. So it can prove that these invariants are maintained forever. But more interestingly, it can find rare bugs. And it can find rare bugs of the code before it's deployed. It finds these violations of the invariant. So this is this tool. You, you have, basically, it's an automatic tool. You think about it like a QA. But it has the invariant, and it checks that. And it's, it's static. It statically analyzes the code. So, uh, in fact, I'm not telling you the exact truth because what happened, this is a problem which is a computationally hard. It means that the computer cannot always prove this kind of invariance. So what happened is that our tool fails sometimes. And this is actually where you have to do something. And of course, we are improving the technology, but at the end, our tool always can fail on some programs. And, and the user can do something. You can apply modularity. You can apply many, many techniques that if you want, you can learn in the workshop about this technique. Uh, why did it stop? OK, I, I just computed it. So the interesting thing, and actually this is the most interesting thing that you can take from Sertora, in the last four years, what we have been doing, and Nuri Doris here is leading this effort, we are actually writing interesting specification for DeFi. And I think this is the biggest value that we have to this community, and of course, it's a collaborative effort. We have it with our fantastic customer. We are writing requirement, and we are writing formal requirement at the moment for DeFi, but for other things. And of course, you think of requirement, this is something, even if you're not a coder, this is sort of a basic property going back to our plateau by, or, or, or our install. But the idea is, it's coming from Dijkstra that you have to write some properties of your code. OK, so for example, the casino always win. It's an interesting property. But more interestingly, in the case of DeFi, you have assets, and you want to make sure that you have enough asset to cover your loan. So this is something that you have to write as a human. And this is what you do with the Sertora prover. You write this invariant as a human. So this is a simple invariant. It's a very, very simple property. It says I have an ERC20 checker, uh, ERC20. And what I want to check, I want to check that the, the total is equal to the sum of the balance. This is a very basic property, but even this basic property is not checked by the compiler currently. And there are others. The bank has enough money. If you think of more clever properties, so if you have LP tokens, we heard about it, that you have a constant pool, then you want to have some property that the, con the pool is constant. So the, the, the multiplication of the two tokens is constant. Or another property is that if one of them is zero, then the other one is also zero. So there cannot be the case that one of them is zero and the other one is not zero. So these are properties that you have to write when you write with, work with, your, with our tool. And these properties are written by human, and I checked by the machine. So maybe I give you a trivial example. Everybody give this trivial example. I'll give it to you. I'm sorry about it, but there are a lot of more interesting examples in our website. So here is a transfer. 
okay, and you transfer a property, and you, sh you see that it, it shows that we maintain the sum of the balance. So that's a very simple example, and we can mathematically prove that it always maintains the sum of the balance. So this is something that we can do. We can give you a formal proof. The code is very simple. Oops. What happens if you, if you change it? Like if you have something that way. You get, oops. I want to show you a bug, but I'm unable to show it. It's okay. So the idea is the tool can actually uh, find bugs for you. And the, the, the flow of the tool is fairly complex. The tool actually implements a lot of clever techniques that has been around in academia for a long time. Okay, so it's not so easy. Because this problem is computationally hard, we have to do a lot of things. And we have to actually, I mean, you think about it, I don't know if you know like operating system or you think of system like Coq. This is actually in four years we have implemented a fairly complex software, which is a product. And it's, this actually is, is a full tool chain. It takes all the code, and it actually checks the code from the source code into the byte code. There's a clever abstract interpretation in, in mind. There's a lot of SMT in mind. And actually, a lot of these things, and of course, I have to, to acknowledge our colleagues at Stanford University, at, at Microsoft, all of these which are helping us in doing this thing. And interestingly, this tool checks the code which is executed. So in fact, we are the number one reported or so, reporter of solidity bugs because we find these bugs by analyzing the code and by enforcing the invariance on the code. And this is something that you can actually check. There is a demo site and you can check it. So maybe I give you uh, just to sort of give you the, a kind of intuition of what this kind of technology can find. So let's look at the most basic properties of economy, which is solvency. So what does solvency mean? It means that everybody runs to the bank, the bank can still pay the money. So that's a very, very simple property, okay? And here are the top protocols, and this is code which is analyzed by the Sertora tool after the top auditors, okay? So basically the tool went to auditing, the auditing came back, the auditing flagged some problems, and the auditing said this is code, this is okay. And these are the solvency issues which were found by the tool after the auditor. And this, of course, you see here the menu. Of course, this, these bugs were found before the code was deployed. But you see the total value which is saved if this, because the, this, these bugs were found before the code was deployed. So how are we doing in terms of comparing to other tools? I already mentioned static analysis. So static analysis is, is complementary. As we said, it finds some bugs, but it actually missed bugs. We have also techniques like we heard about fuzzing. So fuzzing is, of course, cheaper in terms of computation, but it's actually just enum enumerating behaviors. We are not enumerating behaviors. We are basically doing an exhaustive checking of all the behaviors. So we cover all the bugs that are found by, exhaustive, by, te by testing, but we cover rare bugs which cannot be found by just random testing. And in fact, if you can see the bugs that found by our tool, you can see them. Now, of course, a complementary technique is the human, the auditor. And the auditor can find bugs after us, too. If we didn't write the right invariant, the auditor would actually miss. So basically, the auditor will find out some invariant that we didn't check. And then, of course, we update our tool. We update our tool. We, 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 we add this invariant. So at least next time that you add this code, we can, we can check that. So this is complementary. The human and the, and the machine, they are complementary. So this is very, very great. Basically, we have a customer, maybe they're here, I'm not sure. They call Trust Token or TwoFi. Are they here? No. So they, but they are here in the conference. I guess they are doing something else. So what they did, they took our tool. And they basically manually inserted bugs. And they wanted to see who, who, who catches it, whether it's the auditor, whether it's the tool. And what you see here, the tool caught 12 bugs which actually everybody else missed. You see also that the, cool, the tool actually missed one bug because they were not the right property. So this is a complementary where the human and the machine together. So I want to give you sort of a glimpse. If you come to the workshop, you see more. 
but I want to give you a glimpse of how this tool works. And I will get, take you a very, very complex code, but very, very simple environment. Okay? So the, the code here is called Sushi Trident. It's a constant pool. It has about 2,000 lines of Solidity code. Our tool actually analyzes the EVM code, which is much larger. The interesting thing, the tool actually, the, uni, the tool actually finds bugs that actually are very, very hard to find with unit testing. Because in the code, there are many, many behaviors. So I'm going to show you just one bug like this. So the environment that is maintained is that if, if one of the tokens is zero, the other token is also zero. So you see here, you see Bob and Alice. They both can deposit tokens. At the beginning, the bank is empty. So you have zero tokens for A and B. And then what happens, Bob comes and deposits 100 tokens. And then Alice also deposits 100 tokens. So basically, they both have this, these 100 tokens. They, they get some LP shares, but it's not shown. I'm not showing you. So they, they get the LP shares. This is all good. And then there is another oper uh, operation which is possible. It's a transfer. It's basically you are transferring 500 tokens. So basically, Alice decided to transfer 500 tokens. So you see here the bank has more money. And you say, what's the significance of it? And it's, it's just an operation. Nothing is, is wrong here. But what happened is now there is a bug in the code. I'm not showing you the code. The code is not big, but it is complex. And the code did not use the right API. And there is a bug in the code. And you can look in our website and see that there is a bug in the code. And because of this bug in the code, Alice now, she burns her holding. And the result, what happened after this operation, you see that, in fact, the token A is not zero, but the token B is zero. So you see that now we broke this environment. We basically went from a state that satisfied the environment into a state that violates the environment. And you can see, you can ask what's the significance of it. And the significance of it is that now Alice actually can swap the tokens and the bank is empty. So basically all the money is lost. So this is the kind of bug that we are trying to prevent. These are solvency issues. And we are writing invariants in order to, ch to, to check solvency issues. And then we have techniques that check that the code does not have the solvency issues. And these are the things that we are doing with the environment in the code. So this is one error. The other error is equally or even more interesting. So one of the killer or one of the best applications of DeFi is basically stable coins. And the leader in stable coin is MakerDAO. They have the 10% and they are basically have this make, uh, uh, stable coin. They have been around for a long time. And actually, and basically, what they have, they have this stable coin, but they also started, I think, about a year and a half ago. They started using our technology and they, they integrated uh, our technology into their build. And every time they change the code, they check it. So, and the code actually, you know, it carries significant amount of value. So what happened, and this is actually something that could, the, the, one of the developers in, in, in Maker found, basically found out that the basic invariant of the code is broken. So one of the functions can actually break, break the basic environment. So basically the, the, the coin is not actually stable. And this is something that was found, it's a four year old. So basically, the, the code is four years old, and after four years, this bug was, was found. And it was found by this technology. So this is why you have this incentive to write invariant in order to prevent situations like this. So maybe I, I'm kind of uh, closing the talk. I want to sort of give you uh, several uh, sort of lessons I learned. I've been in this domain almost forever, you can see. And basically what happened is that I actually came to work in smart contract because I realized it's an actually one of the best applications of formal methods because you have small code with large value. And, and this is actually, I have sort of, uh, basically this is sort of an interesting domain for this kind of technology. 
And because this technology is kind of well understood, there are a lot of myths about this technology, and I want to take this opportunity to explain them. And maybe the biggest myth about formal methods is that formal method is about finding proofs. It is, of course, true, but formal method is about finding bugs. And the most interesting usage of our application is that we are finding rare bugs before the code is deployed. So this is sort of the mo most interesting application. Of course, you can get a guarantee. But most interesting, and this is actually where the tool actually giving you surprising results. You are finding some bad behaviors of your code by using this environment. So basically, this is a, a case that you have. And maybe the second one, which is also very, when we talk about formal verification, there are a lot of theorems in computer science, like Rice theorem or other, that tell you that formal verification is a problem that can never be solved. And they show you some things, and I have myself work on decidability result. These are, of course, true. But in fact, the biggest value and the biggest, the hardest problem of formal verification is actually coming up with the specification, coming up with the requirement about the code. And this is also what we are seeing. Basically, we have to write these specifications. Of course, in terms of technology, there are also a lot of things that we have to do, and this is where our tool implements a lot of things, and this is where Sertoa innovates. So the idea is that we are not modeling actually the exact machine. We have an intermediate representation, but we are actually have some ideas that we can forget. We don't actually need to, to actually model exactly what it is in order to find bugs and prove the absence. And this is, of course, something fairly technical that I will have to explain, but I, I'm happy to elaborate about it. Uh, the other thing, and that has been known, and we see it in our tool, that in fact, you don't actually need to analyze all the code at once. And this is very, very interesting in the case of DeFi because DeFi is composable by other things. So what happens is we can apply modularity. If your code is modular, then of course also you will work with us and we, we have a subscription model, you will pay less because we actually can analyze your code in a simpler way. So we actually can apply modularity in order to sidestep the complexity of running the code. If you can break your code into several pieces, this will make formal verification easier. So that's important thing. And maybe the, the, the last, but I think not the least, is that the biggest value of formal verification, and this is actually where DeFi are very interesting, that it is not a one-time thing. Formal verification is actually very, very useful when your code is changed. So every time you change your code, you write these environment, and then you have to check them every time you run the code. So uh, I basically want to tell you what's the takeaway here. So I think the be best thing that you can learn from Sertor and from us, and this is actually where we learn a lot, that the DeFi is a very interesting domain for formal specification. And Sertor is actually trying to contribute. We also engage with the community you probably heard the talk by Stani. We have a, a grant with Ave. We basically give people uh, money to give us invariant. And if you want to, to join that, please. And actually, there is a workshop. There are other ways that you can contribute invariant. And we are doing it with other protocol. We are engaging the community and also with auditors. We are have partnership where people write invariant for us. And basically, of course, they have incentive to write this invariant. So that's one thing. And the other thing, and this is basically where I only hinted, we have technology for checking the environment. And we have three types of technology. One of them is the technology that I talked to you about, is checking the code. The other one, which is very interesting, it's led by Chandra Nandi and our team, it's a mutation testing tool. It's a tool for checking the environment themselves are okay. Because for example, we had one customer where basically they wrote environment, and they of course were audited, and then somebody found a bug. And guess what? Nobody accused the auditor. They only accused form formal verification, and they are right. Usually when people have machines and humans, they tend to, to, uh, to, to say that the machines are the fault. Okay, like in automatic driver and other things. So what we want to do, and we are doing it, we are actually checking the environments themselves. And we can find out that, for example, one environment in this case is a tautology. So this means that in the environment is actually independent of the code. 
and we are doing it, the tool which is coming, and the other tool which is coming, and we have actually here Yuval in the audience which is leading it, is a dynamic tool. We actually want to have a tool on the chain that finds the problems which are not detected before the code is, is, is deployed. So we want to have a tool that monitors and checks the same or similar kind of rules when the code is deployed. Thank you very much. Thank you.